Virgil? Welcome to Comics League Dark. I am Jared. I love that intro so much. What's up, Daniel? What's up, Tevia? And we have a packed show today. First off, I got to lie to your plays. What's up, brother? What's up? What a busy week and brightest day and brightest night. No evil shall wait, escape. Wait, 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 wait. It's brightest day and blackest night. No yeah, evil shall program, escape, dude. my son. <laughs> okay. What's up, Jay Heat? Flame on. How's everybody doing tonight? And what's up, old man Nick? I bad man. Yes, exactly. And we are joined once again by Max. What's up, dude? Hey, thanks for hosting tonight. I'm just hey, waking up. <laughs> oh, hey, my man. hey, what's up, Nick? How you doing? Hey, what's up, Tavia? So today we have a, a a packed show in terms of great topics for you all today. So let's get started. Oh boy. So the topics that we have are. X-Men Episode 5, the rumors of a Superman game, Max's current uh, troubles, and by Max, I mean HBO Max, and oh, we're going to do a Q&A. Like, I, I was like, what am I airing my, my dirty hey, one? Max was like, um, do I need to head for the hills? Yeah, exactly. So what do you guys want to talk about first? Want to Let's do a hang to the action? X-Men. Let's go ahead and get the X-Men episode out the way, because that, that's- Apparently, Jay Heat has a rant built up. Yeah, I can tell. Well, yeah, Max, did you watch the X-Men episode? No, but it's all right. Go ahead. Spoil it. I'm all right. All right. It. Oh, okay. All right. So first spoilers off. The chat, though. Yeah. <laughs> spoilers okay. for this episode. Oh, yes. Spoilers. Can be, this land be, be spoilers? spoilers? So you know what's kind of funny about this episode to start off? This had like a crap ton of Ethan Van Skyver stuff in <laughs> it. Like a I lot of those it. characters, Ooh. those side characters, like, like um, I, th- I think his name is like... It, who is on the on the, the one that's like a skeleton inside goo? I know who you're talking about. I just can't remember the name right now. Who's the point is? character? Who's the pixie character they seem to feature a lot? That's M- M- Megan Gwent. Her name is Pixie, and she she's actually been on the X Men team for pretty much. Yeah, they're doing Grant Morrison's new X Men because guess what? They did the first arc from Grant Morrison's X-Men with the Super Sentinel showing up and wiping out Genosha. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Now, before I, I, I uh, quiz the panel on their thoughts, I want to bring up this cool little piece of trivia I found out. So Bo DeMeo was commenting on it, and he said that he wanted the first four episodes to feel like pre- the pre 9 11 world where everyone was kind of optimistic. Everything's going to be okay and stuff. Then 9 11 hits because this is kind of the mutants version of 9 11. So this happens. And then it's like, Oh, no one's safe, particularly with that death. But I'll start with, uh, yeah. uh I'll let Jay. Oh, was, do. Let, uh, let the heat man go. Let the heat man right, go. So I just want to say before yeah, we ahead. start, this episode was quite the gambit. Too soon, man. Too soon. Too soon. Uh, Too soon, Nick. <laughs> Too soon. Heat man, away you go. Heat man. Your run. Okay. Wait, wait. First, here's Jay Yee when he watches the episode. <laughs> You're going to die, clown! <laughs> you think that's funny? I don't hear you laughing now! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Enough. I'll let you have that because it's your show, Jerry. Thank you. Go ahead. Now, with that being said, I can understand what the showrunners were going for. That they didn't want to bait the Logan versus Scott over Gene for the billionth time. Thank you. Even though Gene's reaction to the whole clone saga, pun intended, was. Oh. <laughs> hey, no. you can oh, gosh. So, uh, it's, well, let me put it this way, Jay. He was just one more day, dude. <laughs> Jared, can you give you, him a why did you say that name? Can no, you no. You, 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 would, you would think it was, a, it, it was just another one moment in time. Can Too we fun. please stop talking Too about these past things? <laughs> <laughs> Counter! Okay. All right. Let, let me just drop all the pretenses. 
the whole rogue Magneto. First of all, let me just go ahead and explain this right now in the comments. It's one, it's very sleazy, very inappropriate, and it pretty much puts you in the mind of Judas Contract. Let me say that first and foremost. Uh... As a, okay, as a Teen Titans fan, I'm interested. <laughs> You go. I'll say it in the private chat because I'm not going to risk Jared getting demonetized. Thank you. <laughs> but more, but with that being said, this this is a subplot you could have condensed in three episodes. This does not need to be dragged out for five. Okay. Really? Because all this boils down to spoilers ahead, mind you. If you haven't seen the episode, leave now. So all this boils down to is Magneto martyring and using the memory of Xavier to garner some goodwill, steer public opinion, build up Genosha, and then have Rouge, his former protege, as his queen for public rogue, relations. Rogue, rogue, no one says Rouge. Rogue. <laughs> uh, so what you almost had. Wait, wait, wait. He had a Nick old man moment right there. Oh, what if his powers like super, super? What, that 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 she can make people blush at any moment. What you said, rouge? It's the makeup for it's the red makeup women wear. Make them it's look also the like it's also the French word for red, dude. Magneto oh. looks like great goodness. <laughs> I was trying to avoid that King of Nerds. I was trying to avoid. Oh, jeez, Christopher, that is great. I love that. So come give, on, kids. give That's Granny Magneto a kiss. Mm -hmm. Wait, Dave says Wolverine is an ensemble character like he should be, and I'm glad they're gi they're giving other characters spotlight. This was that there was literally a show called Wolverine and the X Men, which was not bad, by the way. By the way, that Nolan North played Cyclops, and I have bet Nolan North. So there you go, right? There. <laughs> well, you have been Nolan. You just got Nolan. So um, wait, we're making uh, this a thing now. I guess yeah, we're in Nolan time. Water. I guess you could say we're in uncharted waters. Yeah, yeah. But, but I continuing on. So as I was saying, fire, yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead. To give you the basic clip notes version, this is when Rogue and Mystique briefly teamed up after she ran away from home and tested her powers. She somehow stumbles upon Magneto because again, we're going off Grant Morrison's run, and something happens between them, mostly involving how because of Magneto's power set, Rogue, Rogue, excuse me, I almost said it again. Rogue can actually have physical contact with someone without siphoning their powers or injuring it's them. Deep. Magnetism, I, which, I ironically, a, which ironically, which ironically, by the way, was cited as the reason why Gwen Stacy slept with Norman Osborn. It was his, it was his animal magnetism. So, 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 Jared, uh, I guess you could uh, say there was a spark between Rogue and Magneto. Yes. Oh, by the way, and Jay Heat, you forgot a very important event. She took out Carol Danvers. Wait, who, oh yeah, the, oh. arguably one of her, her greatest accomplishments. Which, which, by the way, that is actually canon to X Men '97. Yes, it is. They show because it's if the first show is canon, they have a flashback on Rogue's origin. Hey, hey Jared, how would you feel if uh, they had Ms. Marvel show up, voiced by Brie Larson? I would be pissed. That that's how I would. But Tevia, respond to your question. Respond to your comment. Did she really Why break say up that with name? <laughs> to answer your comment, Tevia. Did she break off with Magneto, or did she find out what Magneto was planning and crawl back to Gambit to save face? Either way, but but with that being yeah, said, I I do appreciate how they just didn't do hold the Scott versus Scott versus Wolverine again. So I let me say that. Because and I've always with Emma. That's why. But even so, I just didn't like this subplot. It went on way too long. And this this could have been done in three. First of all, you're already gonna have you're basically doing a Judas contract comparison with um. I'll put this in the private chat. Thank you. And what's up, Isaac? Keep going, Jahid. Keep going. Hold on. I'm oh my god, he's writing a freaking novel. Yeah, right? what are you doing, dude? No, I'm not. So you're already oh, get, get the uh, frick out of here. Uh, what's up, Antonio? Get the uh, fuck out of here. Yes. Thank yeah, you let's for just... putting it in there. Oh, Brit's here. So we got a uh, uh, play clip. Brit's intro. He's back. Yeah. Gambit, bro. Dave, has to com Dave has the comment of the night so far. Yeah, Every yeah, yeah, he does. Everyone would like to have a flashback of Rogue training Carol. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, but, wh but where was I? I'm losing my train of thought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
So basically, I, okay, and this is another highlight of the episode. Gambit does not act like a simp and just take Rogue, 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 take Rogue back. So. You almost said Bruce. This is so hard for him. <laughs> his, his Louisiana is coming out. This, oh, is ha, comic, ha, ha. this is his comics league moment. Just saying, the, 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 he's got a comics league moment now. Uh, Rogue. It, it is Rogue. now in the lore. It is now. It is now. It's now in the lore. <laughs> I'm just gonna let y'all have your fun, but mo- make it a long oh, story I'm short. Fun at your expense. Basically, despite my okay, needless to say, Rogue has a moment of weakness. Crawls back to Gambit. Gambit is sick of her crap at this point. I'm keeping this PG. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then right after the breakup, the Geno- the Super Sentinel attacks. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you're you're also hopping over that. Also, uh, Jared, your, your favorite lady came in. Yeah, I know. I saw Emma Frost, and I was well. First off, this episode get it, it, it gets a bonus because it included Jennifer. I actually included two Jennifer Hale, so it gets an extra four points. Double hailstorm. And then an a- actual extra five points for having Emma Frost in it. So what's the rating of this? Like 15? See, 10, 4, 19. 19 oh, out dear. of 10. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. This, uh, uh, Just like Dragon Ball Z, these ratings are, are meaningless. Unlimited power. <laughs> I, I, I went Super Saiyan with my ratings, you could say. It's time to go so Super so Saiyan. There's also the other thing we need to talk about, which is the psychic affair that Madeline Pryor... I know kind of it's not. They kind of did the Emma Frost thing, so I was like, "Ah, uh, I, I think Emma Frost is no, 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 no." Because Tevia, if you remember what happened in the Graham Morrison issue, what happened with Emma Frost is that this is when she discovered she can turn into diamond and become indestructible. Because what happens is after Genosha, the X Men show up in the X Jet. They're checking for survivors. She is the only one because th- this is where they introduce the secondary mutations and they turned it and uh, some people have two powers. There's no way they're going to kill off Emma Frost, particularly when Scott's now newly single. Also, and- did you notice that, like, I'm sorry, but I don't think Scott's going to get, I think Scott and Madeline are, are, are because he had a kid with her. Also, no. you notice how as soon as, uh, uh, Madeline freaked like freaked out. Emma like first like like, like Madeline knew, like knew exactly what was happening. I think she was peeking. I think she was peeking on what was yeah, happening. Yeah, they're gonna put Scott with Emma. They're not gonna put Scott with Madeline Pryor. Oh, By no. the way, fun fact: isn't it kind of cool? So Cable shows up before he's like, "You gotta stop! He's got you gotta stop! It's it's all going down!" And voiced by the original voice actor for Cable. That's cool. And I'm like Cable, and and just that that interaction where they're like, he's like. Mom, and he gets pulled back. He's like, you made it. I heard the theme in the background. I can't recite it now because I don't want to risk us getting copyright strike. Hey, Ruthie. Oh, What's up, yeah, Ruthie? Yeah, the whole gang's together. Hey, hey, but, but, uh, geez. And how about night? Uh, how about seeing Nightcrawler? Again, oh, this was a, that was a, that was a surprise. Mm-hmm. This was a good episode to be had. Even though Nightcrawler's only real dialogue was like, hey, j- love is what matters. Forgive her. Make it work. And I'm like, night, Nightcrawler. Come on, I get that Nightcrawler su- supports everyone. He's a devout Christian in the, in the X-Men animated series. But I, if, I, I find if he knew the context of what was really going on in Gambit's mind, he wouldn't have said that, at least not right away. Th- that didn't feel like an immediate response in my mind. Yeah. But that's just me nitpicking. But make it a long story short, because I, I keep going on these tangents. I don't, I don't know why. But make it a long story short. This is definitely the highlight so far because episode four was abysmal. Granted, let me say this. Granted, it is the original voice actress for Jubilee got a few words, got a few lines in. It was that was the highlight of the episode for me. However, you crammed the first half or at least an adaption of life deaf into it. Like either commit to a full full filler episode with Jubilee or just make it the subplot and just connect the two together. Don't try to don't give me two, don't give me two brokered 12 minute segments. Yeah, that last one was kind of stupid, honestly. The show is moving way faster than I thought. Morrison's new X Men already. I hope they bring in all the students. Uh, it has potential. Yeah, yeah they, they really Sorry. are speed running plot lines. Because, like, for example, the Inferno. Also, just throwing in Adversary, which Adversary is another like multi like season long villain. But they're they're literally speed running all like the big stuff. And he, I, here's I really the thing, though, like, Nick. How many episodes are in this season? Ten. 
how many X Men characters can conceivably ju just be done that quickly? Not a not lot. Not to mention, not to mention, episode seven through ten will be the three part finale for the season. Like, so you really yeah. like, see, 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 here's the thing: Inferno could have been ten episodes. Adversary could have been ten episodes. The plot that they really want to do, which is the politics of mutants, that could be ten episodes. Adversary can be ten episodes. They're they're doing stuff that needs to be multi parters in like one maybe two episodes. Like like the Mojo stuff, that and that is like three episodes worth of content, maybe even four. I'd argue right wait, 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 wait. Did it get a more than one episode in the original series? He it got Mojo, Mojo got five issues if I remember correctly. Did he? The Phoenix Saga got an entire season. Well, that's because it's the Phoenix Saga. You can't yeah, that one you can't condense down. They tried yeah, it. Yeah, they well, tried the, it. The Goblin Queen stuff. That that is enough drama. At Purple. least a two-parter. Oh, you mean the Sailor Moon episode? Oh, uh, wait, what? I had I brought that up because Nick made this great edit of the Sailor Moon music to the uh, the, the Madeline Pryor transformation. It was so good. Yeah, episode four oh, was far. the weakest. Yeah, my it was far. the weakest. I would yeah. say episode five though is the best. Well, actually, no, episode one is the best. Uh, episode one. Uh, yeah, yeah. One, episode one, five, two. Three and four. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, four is, the, four is the weakest because uh, they split into two, and really only the second half was actually interesting. Even then, characters kind of act like Forge was acting out of character, to be honest. Yeah, it's like, oh my gosh, you're a goddess. And I'm like, you isn't this, didn't you just meet her? And Morph is kind of laying it on a little thick. Like, get it? Morph does tend to twist a knife, especially after he gets tortured by Mr. Sinister. But Morph wouldn't just go out of his way to just troll somebody. He'd throw a jab, but he wouldn't troll someone at their expense. By the way, they did release a trailer for the, the rest of the season. And uh, Sinister makes a return, so they're probably bringing him back. And uh, this is the other thing that I kind of wanted to bring up. Captain America is showing up! What? In the trailer for X Men '97, they did look like a trailer for like the rest of the season. The Shield comes into view. Well, I uh, well, um, I I I, th I, I uh, wouldn't be surprised if Spider Man shows up. I oh, you're would, definitely getting a cameo episode with Sp with Spider Man '98. You're definitely getting because 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 rem remember, remember we did have the Daily Bugle paper show up. And the um, plot could be that he's trying to find MJ and he goes to to, to the X-Men for help. Well, but you got to realize Spider-Man 1994 90, and, and X-Men 97 are in the same universe. No, I know. he. Go, uh, be, be, uh, the, uh, that's why I said MJ is lost right at the end of uh, Spider-Man. So he goes to the X-Men for like help. Do you have any way of finding her? Can, can you use Cerebro? Yeah. Also, yeah. the other thing to note is uh, Captain America did show up in Spider-Man 94, so I wonder if he would be voiced by the same voice actor. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. And they're not doing Onslaught. No, so Onslaught, no, way too much no, setup. You can, no. 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 Onslaught no. is a multi-season epic. You cannot condense That's like saying they're doing Age of Apocalypse. No! Let me tell you how they first uh, teased Onslaught. So, all of a sudden, the Juggernaut from out in the sky, like, from, like, hundreds of miles away, lands into into the x mansion's lawn he says onslaught is coming they literally don't talk about it for a full year and then they go into the storyline there's a little bit more to that story do you know how it happened from an editorial standpoint you'll love this oh. so so i believe scott lobdell was the 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 writer correct yes he was on so he was in the Marvel editorial office, and they wanted to do something w w with Juggernaut. If I remember correctly, they're like, "Who could take out Juggernaut?" And then <laughs> it's kind of funny is that then Scott Liddell was like, "Onslaught can do it," and they're like, "Who's Onslaught?" And he had to make. And they made up the, the thing. Spot. Yeah, they made it right there on the spot. But um, yeah, okay, no, no problem, Max. But um, so. The, the thing is, is like, where do they go from here? And I, I will say, here's the thing. The thing I didn't expect them to do is kill Gambit. And I'm thinking, now, this could go Steve really Perilous? good. Wait, wait. Are they going to bring the Wait, Steve Nick, 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 Nick. They could go, this could go really good for us. 
Well, this could go into the Krakoa for us because roll the clip. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not rolling that. I don't think they're I doing could... Krakoa. I don't think they're doing. That. Well, I would agree with you, Nick, because they literally just blew up the other mutant island. So why would they do it again? But still, it's like. But uh, how poetic is it that Gambit saves the Morlocks? And for those that, that, that don't know the comics, it's because of Gambit in the comics that the Morlocks are taken out. I believe, I, I, if I'm remembering that storyline correctly. In the original comic, yes, it was the Morlocks who were taken out, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so it, it's kind of poetic that Gambit saves and we hear the da -na 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 -na. I'm sorry, that is the awesome thing. Question, do you, th they're not going to use time travel, Tavia. Uh, I, I would be, because th here's the thing, they played up that death so much, that feels permanent. That really feels like they're going to permanently uh... keep Gambit dead. Uh, hey, we'll see. Comics, mm -hmm. We'll comics see. Have, I mean, Death of Superman. I mean, Death of Superman got an even more grandiose death in Gambit. And they still brought him back. Remember, no one stays dead in comics except Uncle go back. Well, no, actually, he came and back Bruce in Spider Verse. Uh, he, he was the Spider Man on his earth, so technically, he's come back to life too. What do you want to say, Taladia? I think Magneto's death is also permanent too. I really think that as well because mm. even though he's about magnetism like you know use magnets yeah. and whatnot i think that that is permanent too because he had you know people around him like there's no way he su he'd survive that especially that kind of blast no i think he's dead plus the the sentinel said omega level threat eliminated and uh tevia i have two words for you go spider moving on so the yeah, I think he's dead, which actually was kind of interesting. If he's dead, that's a cool like redemption arc for Magneto coming from like the, the villain trying to like save the uh, save all mutants and he gave his life, uh, protecting one. And then Dave, said, I, I mean, yeah, what you could have is you could have Zorn. latent psychic energy from both Magneto and Charles Xavier enter. Uh, Magneto's body, and then he oh, becomes Onslaught. He's pulling an X Men Three. <laughs> no, that's a level. Oh, by Nick, do you know the story of Red Onslaught? Oh dear God, please tell me. So what happened was, and this is after the death of Charles Xavier after Avengers versus X Men. So what the Red Skull does? He decides he wants psychic powers. So he cuts mm. Professor X's brain out of his head and puts it on top of his own brain and he transforms into Red Onslaught. What were the creators smoking? Because I want some. <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? Uh, I the Bergen doesn't count. No, that counts. They call her Gwen Stacy. That counts, Tavia. Well, it's it's multiverse. It's it's variant. Like the actual Gwen Stacy it is dead. Her like by the way, um, whatever happened to the, the children? Did like did, did they have, like? I think they, they were shelved and never seen again. I think they like died, if I remember correctly, because they were still like uh, I think they were like experimented on. They were like degrading in that storyline, which will not be mm -hmm. named. Oh, by the way, I made a great joke. So when I was watching <laughs> across the Spider Verse, and Gwen said, "In every u universe, Spider-Man falls for Gwen, uh, falls in love with with Peter Parker." And I go, "In every universe, she also just falls." Get that was the my trick joke. out of here. Also, the twist could be Magneto staged the attack on Genosha to gain more sympathy for mutants. The attack by the execution at the UN too. Uh, uh that's, that's getting no, into I, some, that's getting into some false flag BS that. Uh, I don't think Disney wants to open that can of worms. Plus, that is not consistent with Magneto's character. There's no way because here's the thing about Magneto: he does it. He would not put a, 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 create a situation where innocent mutants are killed. Mm, mm, yeah. That it, I, I would be very, I would be very pissed if that happened. And it looks like they're keeping it. It looks like these characters are at least acting mostly in character. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't like. Yeah, I'm not going with that. Mostly but, in character. Yeah, so I'm going to go around the panel and then we'll talk about like in terms of like how we rate this episode at 10. Me, I rate it as a 9 out of 10 because it's an epic action scene. It shows up like suddenly you get like tons of cameos. So you have to like is pay that attention. The, is like, that before bonuses? That's before bonuses. Actually, no, wait, wait. It, it's a, it's a, so let me, I have to recalculate this because of the bonuses. So yeah, 19 out of 10. Be, because. <laughs> After have, 10 points, just to yeah. count them. 
Yeah, I have to because it had it had epic action. I liked all the cameos. It had my lady Emma Frost. It had Jean Grey twice. And it put Jean Grey away from Scott's. I almost said Scott Snyder. Away from Scott Summers. So I'm good Ima- there. Imagine if they brought in um, Ms. Marvel, but she was voiced by Laura Bailey. Yes. But anyway. That would be a 10 out of 10 episode for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, no, that, that would be a 19 out, uh, out of 10 for you, Nick. So, Taladia, how do you yes. rate this episode out of 10, dude? For me, it's a straight 9.5 out of 10. Okay. Because I felt, I felt the story. I was engaged in the story and I definitely was like, I'm just like, yes, I'm, I like it. I, I, and the fact that the romance, the kind of romance problem between Magneto, Rogue and Gambit, that type of thing. Great to see Nightcrawler, one of my favorite X-Men besides Wolverine. And um, I also like the fact that we got to see Genosha for the first time. Mm Mm-hmm. Like this, I and think last this, time, and and the last time, yes. So that was cool. But yeah, I just think it's nine point five out of ten. I can't wait for the next episode because I'm really excited to react to that. Before I go to Jay Heat, Jay, he put in in the private chat, "Who's more toxic, Lois Lame or Jean Grey?" The answer is always Aww. Lois. The answer I, is I, always okay. Lois. Okay, always I'm Lois. gonna. I'm, I want to put a put a differentiator. I think Madeline okay. Pryor is just doing the best she can. I, I think regular Jean Grey is, is toxic, um, but Madeline Pryor, I think she, like he's just more of an acting, more like a decent enough person. Like I yeah, don't but really no have one's more Pryor. toxic than Lois Lane, and that's why she belongs by the General Zod. Lois like Lane. Yeah, that's what we call her on the show, <laughs> Lois Lane. There you go. There we go. By the way, oh, it, okay, it, okay, no, no, no. Uh, who is more toxic, comic book Captain Marvel or Lois Lane? Lois Lane. Lois Lane. Oh. Always Lois Lane. Close Always one. Lois Lane. Oh. So, Jay Heat, how do you rate this episode at 10? For me, I'd give it an 8 only because of the subtext of what's going on leading up to it. But if I were to see, but if I saw episode 5 as a st- on its own, I'd bump it up to a 9. That's good. I appreciate I, that. I'd be fair. Old Man Nick. All right. So, I give this an 8.5 out of 10. Okay. Uh, it's not terrible by any means. I feel like the battle is a bit chaotic and somewhat difficult to follow. That's pretty bad. Uh, they are, but okay. I, I heavily disagree, and we can debate that sometime. Uh, but uh, I, I thought it was fine. The relationship drama I thought was a bit corny. That's X Men. Uh, but though. overall, <laughs> eh, even by X Men standards, this was a little bit too uh, Days of Our Lives y. So, yeah, like not terrible by any means, but uh, could be better. Yeah, okay, that, that works. So moving on to our next topic. So we have either the Superman game, HBO M- M- Max having issues. Max. Let's talk about Max. All right. Yeah. So, by the way, not not by the way, not the Max that what are you airing right about me? What is going this, on here? I'm putting <laughs> we're cancel, we're this canceling addendum. you on your own channel. Max. We're canceling. Oh, we came on just to cancel. Sure. So it, it there's a rumor going around that the subscriber numbers for Max were so low that WB is considering shuntering the project. Now, the thing is, oh, 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 Randy, thank you. you. Nick, you should really read Golden Age Superman comics to see how toxic Lois Lane is. You know, yeah. I should really I should really have a Patreon tier to where if you, if you get some money, I'll read it and review it on stream or whatever. Then uh, we're all going to write one more day and since pass in there multiple times. So you always you give me money, it. I'll read. You give me enough money, I'll read Avengers two hundred. No, that that has to be for Nick. But anyway, so here's my thing. Let's say this is true. I always tr- treat this until it's true, unless otherwise proven. If this happens, what happens to to, to all, all the DC content on Max? And what happens to the future DC plans that stuff that was gonna go on Max? I'll start with Taladia. I mean, oh, okay. It it's for me, it's like it's very concerning considering you got the penguin literally coming out next well, end of this year, beginning of next year, whatever yeah. is coming out. And it's like from I think it, if they shut down, where's the penguin gonna go? What, you know, I that's, mean, there's that's, tons of other streaming services that would Dave, love to have it. There you go. Including one that starts with an N. That's a that, that yeah, that's I a mean, very, it's it's almost like we've been calling for that. 
Yeah, I mean, I would like to see. So you mean they would sell the Snyderverse to Netflix? Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, I would like to see the Penguin move over to Netflix anyway, because I mean, if you don't know, Joker's also on Netflix now, apparently. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Sorry, that trailer looks good. So if Joker, if Joker's on Netflix, there's there's always a plenty of opportunity for, um, uh, what's it called, the Penguin to be there. But if Mm -hmm. if if, guys, if HBO Max is shutting down, if if. Again, this is just rumor, so we're. Ju- I'm not saying it's happening. I'm just saying, if in the event, as a thought experiment. So likely, what'll happen is they'll t- is they'll start like auctioning off their like most profitable stuff. Like all the DC stuff will go somewhere. Mm-hmm. G- as Te- as Tevia brought up, get Game of Thrones and Dra- House of the Dragon will go somewhere. Right. Isaac says, "I hate the Warner Brothers changed name to Max." Yeah, because here's the thing. I, I, their justification for changing the name was HBO is like synonymous with like only mature content. The problem with that is that HBO is synonymous with also quality entertainment. So it yeah. didn't work. Uh, n- uh, Nick, I'll, I'll ask you. So what do you th- th- think about all this? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's not really surprising given how things are. I mean, Max has good content. Don't get me wrong. Thank you. But I like, appreciate it. <laughs> all right i respect that i respect that 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 was that was very well done sir what's um, up jacob but uh but at, what, the thing is i'm sorry you, you you got me off my track brother thank you but anyway um but no um this youtube channel has really good content but thank still you. is a streaming service uh and as we've kind of seen uh zaslov he's been selling off uh, lic- licensing like Man of Steel, a lot of the other DC stuff, the other stuff. So that to me is kind of a precursor. I mean, o- like obviously, it- Warner Brothers has stuff that other people will want because, like for like Game of Thrones alone, that's going to be a multi-million dollar deal. Like someone will will get the rights to both House of the Dragon and Game of Thrones, like Netflix. You know what I'm saying? They mm-hmm. will pay like 10, 20 million dollars just for ga- the right to have Game of Thrones alone. Um, mm-hmm. and then the DC stuff. So, like, I, I really see stuff just kind of spreading it on like sort of it's like, let's say Game of Thrones will go to uh Apple Plus, and then DC stuff goes to Netflix. I think it'll just kind of spread out like that. Yeah, that that could, could happen. It's again. It's not like it will. I'm not like. Uh, yeah, I'm not advocating for that. HBO Max is not. Sh- HBO was not. Well, we're not saying HBO is shutting down. The only reason why I put HBO here is so people coming into the stream didn't think Max was shutting down. I, I had to put like a <laughs> distinction in here. Yeah, we so don't want. We don't want to. We don't want to confuse. Max I am shutting down. Yeah. Ooh, what? what? So so uh. sp- um speaking of him, so Max, what do you? Th- I got. It. I love. I love you guys, but I gotta be real. I think this is a complete BS. I'm not saying you're saying it's 100 percent true. No, but I know uh, you're saying it's a rumor. But I think this is total fake news. Mm-hmm. Probably. Uh, I, probably. I I I think Max is doing well. It's not like you know. It's not like Netflix levels, but I think it's doing well right now. Since uh, I also didn't like the name change, mm-hmm. but I think they've done pretty good since they merged together and, and got rid of stuff. Like, um, even though I was upset they didn't release some movies like Wile E. Coyote and Batgirl, I mm-hmm. think they're actually doing better. The movies are actually really doing really good without yeah. DC. Unfor- unfortunately, DC is, not, is what we what we love, but mm-hmm. they've done yeah. really good this year with uh, Dune, RV, Wonka. Um, the upcoming uh, Monopoly then, yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. They were always going to be at a. Keep in mind, even even though uh, they were still always going to be at some loss, no matter what they did, honestly, from where they were. Yeah, especially with the brand expectation with HBO in of itself, the merger with Warner Brothers, and just the relative downgrade they've been the past five years. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case, but it's unlikely because. There, Zaslav is contemplating another merger or just to sell the company off again altogether and trying to restructure Max and all the licensing with all these with all this content is just too much of a hassle this late in the game. Yeah. I, I, Zaslav did say that everything's for sale, so I wouldn't put Pout and Pass selling, but actually shuttering Max, I, I don't think it's possible. 
Well, the thing is, I would I, I would be shocked mm-hmm. if I saw that. Happen. Well, we've had this discussion before, but I think there's only two people who would realistically buy Warner Brothers: Universal and a- and Apple. <laughs> Amazon's not going to buy it because uh, antitrust, because they already own MGM. Disney's not going to buy it because if Disney buys it, they'll be forced to sell off D- like DC because the FTC is not going to allow Disney to own both major comic book companies. That is a monopoly. Like they they can't spin that. So what, Disney is not going to buy it. Um, Paramount might like Paramount, you know, CBS Paramount. I I, I don't think they're in a position to. Universal has Comcast money plus all the Universal properties plus Universal Park. Like I think Universal would be the best fit for Warner Brothers. Uh, Apple could buy it because Apple's been like been silently killing it with Amp- Apple Plus. Like Apple like Apple Plus content's actually really good. Um, oh yes, dude. And and I oh, could see yes. them. I could see them wanting to buy Warner Brothers. Plus, they have the money; they could very easily buy Warner Brothers. Um, you know, so and plus having access to all those IPs. Like, if Warner, if Apple really wanted to make a big push, Warner Brothers would buy, would be the studio they buy. Like that, that would put that, that, that would true. put Apple it, it, that would be, put Apple be, in the same league as Amazon. Yeah, it it it'd be interesting to see Apple take Warner Brothers. Very interesting to see what type of IPs they could double the money. Basically, all right? of a sudden, all the back computers are Apple computers. I think, but I would prefer if Universal took it, just because of the parks, and also like I feel like the Universal IPs were like, I mean, Fast and the Furious, X Justice League, anybody? <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yes! So you could have a Bat Family movie hanging out with the Toretto's. So Batman and to and. Uh, and Toretto can go, it's all about family. I just want to see Dominic Toretto drag race the Batmobile. Yes. And, and it's but, the Affleck Batmobile. By the way, that's how they announce it. That's literally how they announce it. Is they have Vin Diesel and Robert Patterson that have like a drag no, race. And it has to be Affleck. Oh, and, ba- and watch Toretto actually wins and he wins the Batmobile. <laughs> Imagine he rolls into a drag race with like the Affleck Batmobile or like the Patterson Batmobile. No, no, no. Even better. It's like, uh, you got my car. What do you get you can do now? I'm gonna get drive through. Uh, <laughs> yes, have you Zaslav did cancel mm-hmm. uh code yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, I, I want Ye- Ye- Universal. I, I first off, I want Ye- Universal to buy it for one reason. Theme park. And yeah, like a PC imagine, theme park. Like, like, well, it would probably be a land. Uh, like, imagine like a Gotham. Like, it would probably. Like, I've said about this in other screens, but like, imagine a dual Gotham and Metropolis theme park. Gotham is night, Metropolis is day. It's like split into two, and then yeah, Claudia, go ahead. Is there a DC theme park in Universal? Because that was just no. a Harry Potter one. I know there's a uh, Harry there's Potter Six one Flags. Too. Six Flags has has uh, some DC content. Uh, um, y- 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 you know it's gonna be kind of awkward, isn't it? it doesn't you, 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 um, Universal have a Hulk ride? Well, okay. Yeah. Here's the thing: the rights, the rights to like the. I think on the uh, East Coast, it's either Six Flags has has the Marvel license, so that's mm-hmm. that's why you don't. That's why um, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout and Avengers Campus is only on the California side. I believe that's how the rights go. Mm-hmm. The DC World next to Super Nintendo World. Oh. Did you hear the- <laughs> Did you hear the rumor that you know how they shut, the, shut down the Poseidon uh, land, the in the lo- the Lost Empire world in the Islands of Adventure? There's rumors they're going to turn it into Legend of Zelda. Ooh, I, I mean that's like it's that. not that hard of a conversion, like with the rocks and whatnot. It wouldn't be too yeah, hard. Yeah, it's not. To it. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. So I think I, I think we've talked enough about this topic. So let's go on to Superman. I just Transition. Transition. Um, if Universal builds a Pokemon Land, they will own all the money. Yes, they will. So, so t- actually, Claudia, do you want to g- give us the down low on the on this little story right here? Yes. By the way, guys, take it with a grain of salt. Don't take it as facts. Don't take it. It's a rumor, right? So this rumor is coming from. Just DC guy uh, at DCEU leaks. He says we are ready. To, we are giving information a little earlier. We have confirm, confirmed with our source that WB Games Montreal is developing a Superman game. 
we have seen an early model of a Superman flying over a city. We're assuming Metropolis and models of alien creatures and robots. We still don't know where it's located, whether it's in Gotham, uni Gotham Knights universe or a new universe, or it, co or it could be in the DCU. A recall that James Gunn said in 20 January 2023 that there would be also games set in the DCU. The game is expected to release in 2026-2027, Open World Metropolis with Superman as the only playable character and protagonist. Mm. So, sorry if I... Sorry if I... Okay, first question. Is the leaker reliable? Like, Do they have a proven track record? That's my first question. I don't know. That's the thing. That's something I don't know because this was... Yeah. Sent to me by... That this mm -hmm. was sent this this was sent to me by somebody that um is a leaker himself and he DM'd me and he was like, dude, you might want to look into this. Yeah, did the rely did the leaker who sent you this is he a reliable leaker? Yes, he is. Okay. He, like like he, like if still a dual cell says, says something, I'll I'll take I'll take I'll take it more into consideration. But just some random person, I'm like No, oh, it's uh somebody that he he's he, the person that sent me this actually leaked Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad before the game was even announced. All right. Well, if you vouch for him, then uh, I'll, I'll put some more stock into it. So, him. so that's actually kind of cool. But the thing is, is like I believe because I, I saw the same post that, that that you post in the comics league chat, but it's like it's not sure that if it's going to be part of the DCU, right? Yeah. You see, see, here's the thing. I thought I thought uh, the Arkhamverse is part of the DCU, you know, or did James Gunn change his mind again? No, he never said it was part of the Arkhamverse. No. Uh, he, he he never said the Arkhamverse was part of the DCU. Uh. Right. And by the way, Dave has a great idea. Imagine an attraction where you actually catch Pokemon by throwing balls at animatronics, and you and you keep them di digitally to transfer to games and, and battles and other parkours in VR. Oh, That's like a like a like a real life Pokemon Go kind of thing. Yeah. Hmm. So anyway. Okay. Now that's cool. It's I, I, I've long said that someone has to come out with a Superman game at this point because already coming with a Wonder yeah. Woman game. We've had enough Batman games. As much as I love the Arkham games, yeah. shameless plug for, for my Arkham Night streams. But um, pancake. Yeah, you should <laughs> talk, Master. I can't hit anything in Borderlands. Hey, hey! At least, at least okay. I don't run into. Shots at least they don't fired. hit every other wall. At least when I'm driving, I don't hit every other wall when I'm playing. You try <laughs> driving the Batmobile, sir. You I try do. driving I, the Batmobile. I do. After the stream, I literally played the game on my Switch and I had no problems. Sure, sure. Okay. Sure. Um, but and, and this is getting ugly fast. Right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is getting ugly really we'll fast. We'll see. Okay. Uh, and Dave, it's, it's WB Games Montreal. So they did Gotham Knights and they did Arkham Origins. Yeah. So they have really a mixed track skeptical after that. Gotham Knights, not going to lie. Yeah, mixed track record. But here's the you thing. You still got to do a review. Hey, I don't yeah. care. Yeah. I got to review the game and the show. It don't matter to me. And, and correction. Well, from what I understand. Yeah, wait, wait. He has to watch the show. We don't. We have to watch him. So I literally did a whole stream where I watched the first three episodes. Mm -hmm. but anyway, so, so Nick, what what were you saying? So Warner is saying Arkham Origins isn't really a terrible game. It's just meh. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, it's it, it's not bad. It's fun. It's, it's actually really fun. Honestly, in my opinion, it's super underrated. Like ridiculously hmm. underrated in terms of a game and actually has a pretty decent story i think pe people had problems with it not being like conroy and not being like a sequel and stuff i i, I forget exactly what people what uh, pe people's issues with it dave says hmm. must be a mediocre tie-in for le legacy maybe i don't know because you know how often jg changes his mind a lot oh geez after a huge fiasco that was the Suicide Squad game, WB Games should face that they have no idea how to make a superhero game. Okay, okay. here's what I'll say say about the DLC. We knew J Joker was going to be relatively mid going in, right? Can we, all, can we all acknowledge that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Depending on how bad this flops, the remaining seasons, I could argue, get canceled. And we just, nope, you're done. Your shelf life is cut in half. I'll, I can. I'll tell you what. Uh, actually, you know what, Taladia, go go ahead while I, I go to the comments. So, from like me speaking to Miller, they're not gonna do. They're not. They're not gonna cancel any of the DLCs. They're gonna do up to season five, right? Okay. Just, well, so, okay. For what? Well, that's a, that's a current for plan so, anyway. Plans can for, change. No, no, we know that. Let Nick. him cook. Let him cook. L let Taladia finish. So, the the their plan is just to have like 
the five five seasons and then that's it. That's because they have that one year support. Mm-hmm. That is that is Rocksteady's forte of things because they know that Joker flopped. They know that the, the game flopped. So that's why they're doing the seasons and whatnot because they need to have that one year. Otherwise, if they cancel it now, what what are they gonna? What is well DC? He, he, you know. Well, yeah. here's the here's the thing. Like I I, full, I fully believe that is their current plan. But if the game, if the numbers are so low, where it's 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 costing them way more money than to keep it going, than to do the seasons, Warner Bros. will pull the plug. Like yeah. that is a fact. Mm-hmm. So I, I have no doubt that's their current plan. But if it does bad enough, they will mm-hmm. cut their losses. Yeah, I mean David Zaslav has a thirsty ass. Yeah, yeah, we got it. A question: Do you think this Superman game will not be a? Li- It'll be a live service game, Tavio. Uh, uh, the only one that that probably won't be a live service is Wonder Woman. <laughs> But let me put this right. Wonder Woman has to do like gangbusters. Practically, it has to do like Hogwarts l- l- legacy numbers in order for them to decide let's not go live service with these games anymore. Yeah, that they, they, they'll look at they'll look at Wonder Woman and they'll be like, okay, yeah, this is this is the way to go forward. This is the pattern to go for because, like, the way I see it is, if this super ga- Superman gamer rumor is true, and it it, it is being made then it could be imminent before they announce it. It could be end of this year. It could be next year. But it'll be it'll be sometime soon that WB Games 1 Troll will announce their game. As, in terms of uh, um, Monolith's Wonder Woman game, they'll, they'll probably show up at Summer Game Fest. That's that's a, that's a, that's, 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 that's without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, we need to see more about Wonder Woman. I was about to say, they have to show up. At, they have to give us something. Because so far, I've said this many times, it's very concerning that we haven't gotten a gameplay trailer. Three years. Yes, three years. We haven't gotten a gameplay trailer. We haven't got... Uh, the only looks we've gotten is like LinkedIn head- headers banner. and that... Yeah, a banner and that and that trailer and that teaser trailer, which was cool. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just like... Yeah, get, Three years. Let me put it this way. We knew what Suicide Squad was going to be pretty much the year after it was announced. Like yeah. we, like I knew from like looking, like speaking to you know the guy who leaked it. Right, he said that it, that it was be a Suicide Squad game, and there was going to be a Gotham Knights game. Um, no, Daniel, I don't think the One Woman game is not going to be a Starcraft Ghost. I don't think. No, it's not. No. Um, no, no, no. My no, only concern no. is if they 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 apply the Western game dev woman filter to Wonder Woman. In Based particular, upon, line. Well, let me put it to you this way. We do know what Wonder Woman looks like in the game, and it's not yeah. that. Because they, yeah. they actually showed her face and her whole costume in the uh, trailer. She looks a lot like Gal Gadot. Not that I'm Yeah, well, that was three years ago. There's plenty of time. To yeah, play. exactly. That's the sad part is that Nick is right. That stuff could change real fast. So, yeah. Like, look at what they did to start. Like, yeah, like we had this conversation on uh, Fern and Frenzy earlier. Like, you look at the models for these, for these, for these video game characters, uh, and they're beautiful. Like, they're absolutely gorgeous. And then you look at the, the characters, and it's just like, what the heck? It's Wonder yeah. Ma'am. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Wonder Ma'am. This yeah, I've been nice waiting for these kind of jokes. Not gonna uh, lie. Yeah, yeah I, I, and again, I would love a Superman game. I really want a good Superman game, and preferably keep out Lois Lane. But that'll probably n- never happen. That's I never what? got what? I no Lois Lane is Superman yeah. game. Uh, ironically, yeah. she play uh, or keep her away from Clark. That's all you need. Because ironically, hey, Jared, she doesn't play that big of a role in the co- in the comics, really. Jared, how would you feel if it was announced in the Wonder Woman game Superman is going to show up, and then you start to hear rumors that there's a romance between the two, or there's a romance option like in Mass Effect? I would go for I would go. That for would that. be a that would be a that, that would instantly make the game a hundred out of ten. It, instantly, I would tweet out, "Okay, my only romance that I'm going to do in every playthrough I go with this is Superman and Wonder Woman <laughs> forever. That I am committing to it. Everything else I, can change in terms of like my costumes hmm. and stuff, but this is staying the same. And which it could because like scene... they're together in crisis, so it's not like it couldn't happen." And then imagine there's a scene 
where like she's talking to Batman, Batman's trying to hit on her, and she's like, No, go away. Yeah, she's like, Don't be a she actually says, Don't be a Bruce Tim. No, no, she goes, Shouldn't you be with Batgirl? Uh, oh dude. All right, too soon. I'm just telling but, I'm just saying that'll be funny. Please what don't say, say Claudia. But I was gonna say this, right? The way I feel right now is that we'll give it time, right? We don't know what this case is right now where, when it comes down to Warner Brothers games um, in terms of where what their plan is going forward. Um, because we know they're doing live service game. We know that, right? That That's something. But if you remember a year ago, David Zasloff did say that, that if there's a Superman movie coming out, that they would explore the Superman world. You remember that from, from that yeah. uh, article, right? Mm-hmm. So it kind of matches up to that, right? I can see that being the case. Now, if if there is a Superman game coming, it can come out in 2026 just to keep people invested in the Superman movie, right? So people can say, oh, yeah, there's a Superman game coming out. Oh, why don't we check out the Superman movie? So people can see that, right? And it's people still exploring that world. Um, if you remember, Hogwarts Legacy came out in 2021, 20, was it? Hogwarts Legacy 2023. Yeah, sorry, yeah. 2023. And I think it was the year before, the year before that, there was the Fantastic Beast film. Mm-hmm. So it kind of adds up if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, also, you got, also, you know, you get, you know, you had to forget Warner Brothers is developing a Harry Potter uh, series for HBO Max that is following yeah. the films a lot closer. And J.K. Rowling is involved with that series, is going to do Gangbusters. Because here's a dirty little secret the left doesn't want you to know Harry Potter is still popular. Harry Potter. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, question. I'm is sorry, this... I'm just laughing. Oh, okay. the, the left <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Question: Is the, the, the Superman game being developed in the Unreal Engine? Uh, I don't know. That's something I don't know. I can. I'm. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask around see if I can find out if it's gonna be an Unreal Engine five. But you know. I mean, what it... else would it be like? What other, what engines has Warner Brothers been using? Like, what do they use? Unreal Engine for... four. Modified Unreal Engine 4, Unreal Engine 3, modified. So, so they're, they're used using... To using Unreal Engine. So logic would dictate that they're most likely using UE5. But it depends on if they are going to go for the Unreal Engine 5. Because they could always Yeah, go we back. don't know. I'm just speculating. Mm-hmm. Let, yeah. That's mm-hmm. my most... Let's, it's the most probable answer. We, we There's nothing to back it up on other yeah. than prior history. Yeah. Randy says, you never know. Um, maybe the crisis was a testing ground for Superman Wonder Woman. Yes. Uh, the, there's already an online Superman game made um, made by a fan. Yeah, there is. And uh, let's see what else. I mean, hey, what's up, a... Legion? How you doing, dude? Uh, I mean, do you, are, the, people make lots of fan games in Unreal Engine. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So let's uh, let's wrap it up. So the, the, the last Transition. thing we're going to do is we're going to announce that next week on Comics League and on, on all of our channels, because we'll be restreaming it, we are going to do a live watch-along and discussion of Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, where we, again, we're, that's going to replace uh, Movie Night next week. So we're going to watch it. We're going to discuss it afterwards, and we're going to have a ton of fun for, for that. So I'm going to go around. Uh, Taladia, where can we find you, and what have you got coming on your channel? So on my channel, I will be doing a uh, obviously an interview with uh, Jared from Comics League, as we're going to be talking about his channel, talking about his backstory, his origins, and all that good stuff. I will be also be doing a Superman game video game video, and also be doing a live stream as well, discussing about this and doing have like comments and you guys interact with me and whatnot, and. Also, um, I did a stream with uh, Sil Abdul um, on his ch- um, Twitter and Twitch. Make sure you go check that out as I uh, talked about Wonder Woman, Suicide Squad, talked about Marvel Rivals, Marvel 1943. So it's a very fun time. And I'll be soon, we'll be doing a collab with Jay Heat as we got some Sparking Zero news and Dragon Ball news. Too. Yeah. Indeed. So stay tuned. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, you didn't know I was into Dragon Ball? Max? No. Hey, you, there's a no lot of things you don't knows. know about me. Uh, no Uh-oh. one knows. So, uh, <laughs> Nick, uh, uh, Nick, where can we find you? And what have you got coming on your channel? 
All right, you can find me on X at the Phoenix Press. YouTube just there the same. Tomorrow I got my Spider-Man live stream. Uh, we're continuing to try to save New York City, and uh, uh, I gotta look, put a link in a private chat for I, I got my my comic book is, is currently in the pre-launch. That's gonna be uh, pretty awesome. So you guys could uh, sign up for that. We'll be going live uh, early next month. It's a pretty good comic to do same so myself. And then uh, yeah. You got the usual comments watch. Also, uh, next Wednesday, me and Jared will be talking with Master of TDS. We'll be going over the bot situation over on Twitter. That is uh, probably going to be a really good stream, and you don't want to miss that. TDS has been doing some great work, and he's been making all the right people mad. Well, by the way, we do have a con confirmation real quick. This is live. That in Invincible has been renewed for season three, and the voice acting has already been done. Woohoo! Yeah, no, there's been some answer. leaks. There's been there's been some leaks that have uh, come out for season three, like character sheets. I think I've shared mm -hmm. a few of them. That, that looks great. So Jay Heat, where can we find you? And what have you got coming out? You can find me at Jay Heat seventy five on Twitter or X or Jay Heat Blaze on YouTube. I've been doing some more recent playthroughs, not only with Mass Effect two, part of the larger trilogy, but also Dragon Age Origins. I might continue Dragon Age two as well. Hmm. Also, I got my, as for New Direction Verse content, me and Jared will be collaborating on this one. You probably can't see me because of the topic. But as you can see here, it's basically God Killer's perspective from the fallout of God Killer 2. It's going to be really fun. Electric Boogaloo. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, for Comics League, Br Britt and I are going to be talking about uh, the, the JLA book, uh, I think it's called Power, Power and Glory, where Superman fights the god uh, of Krypton, Rao. And uh, we're wow. going to be talking about... Yeah, exactly. We're going to be talking yeah. about the rebirth. So there was a rebirth, rebirth arc of Justice League that was introducing the kids of the Justice League, like Hunter Prince and like and all that. That was supposed to be the sequel to this, and Hunter was supposed to be Superman and Wonder Woman's kid. So we're obviously, we're going to be talking about that. In next week's Under Ooh. Two Capes and Commentary, I'm figuring out what we're going to do with that. And again, for movie nights, give me uh, Rebel Moon. So stay here, oh, heroic. I, before oh, you yeah, end, good. make sure you do Max's outro because you never asked him oh, yeah. about the oh, oh, yeah, Superman sorry. game. Max, you, uh, where can we find you and, we'll, we'll, and we'll, uh, what have you got coming on your channel? Oh, um, Movie Madness and Entertainment on YouTube. Uh, Mad Max Movies 1 on, on X. Uh, VHS tapes are what's coming. I'm going to be doing more reviews. Mm -hmm. Going to try to get back to the theater. Lots of uh, movie and video game content. Lots of live streams. Appreciate you guys hosting the show tonight. Anytime. 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 Oh, and by anytime. the way, one more thing I want to announce is that, again, on Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be playing Arkham Knight, and, and the panel will roast me as I attempt to fight both Batman and my urge to strangle him through the screen. So yes. <laughs> stay heroic, everyone. It's epic. Stay heroic, everyone. And I will see you in the next one. Lois Lane sucks. She belongs to General Zod. See you later.